Thank you for coming here. This is ECO's Global Summit. It's the first time this is happening here in Eastern Europe. For those of you who don't know what ECO is, it's been going on since 1986, and the summits have been happening since 1999. But this summit comes at a particular interesting hour. You know, I, when I got the invitation, I said to them, I said, oh my goodness, a room full of communicators. I'm an economist. I'm a technologist. This is called uh, suicide, maybe? You know, they're quite eloquent. And in a time of chaos, you can bank there's going to be enough stories for us to talk about. What a change. You know, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do with me today, as I'm going to be your host through a jam-packed agenda over two days, with a lot way more competent people in PR and communication history than I could attempt to become. We're going to be talking about identity. I want to start by introducing somebody who apparently said to me he needs no introduction, no bio, and is well known to the community. So please, let's welcome the president of Eco Global Summit. Ah, get going. Thank you. Grzegorz Szczepański, one of the most difficult names uh, in our country, probably to pronounce. That's why, for the ones that, that, that don't, don't know me, please call me Greg, Gregory, whatever. Uh, welcome, welcome to the ICCO summit for the first time, indeed, in Poland and in my very hometown, Warsaw. Welcome in person. We are trying to build the presence after the periods of pandemic, and gradually I can observe that we are getting more and more at our meetings. Last time we've met in Dubai. I'm so happy to see so many of you coming from all the possible corners of the world. Just, just yesterday, during the drinks, I was speaking to our colleagues from India, quite a big group, <laughs> uh, to our colleagues from Thailand, from the USA, Thank you so much for making that effort and come and make yourself available in person. We will be experiencing the public relations in its purest form here, which is establishing and nurturing relationships between human beings and in the real life. ICCO is the global voice of public relations. Our ambition is to give the meaning to our profession. We can do it by, for example, earning a well deserved place at the decision-making tables of most significance. And only today we will be introducing you to the very two strategic partnerships that we've been working on since we've met last time last year in Dubai. And I hope you will receive uh, these projects as the kind of the meaning it's going to bring to our profession. Just one sentence about the content. Talking to many of you, we kind of feel that the turning moment for our industry is happening now. The one thing that we don't know is what is actually coming from, from around that corner that we are now turning on. Therefore, we have for you the great speakers and a lot of thought-provoking sessions that will enable you to create your own version on what is coming. I will be very much interested to hear them closer to the end of the conference. But now, enjoy the show. This is the right place to make new contacts, new network, new connections, and drive the PR and comms industry to the sky, to the unbelievable heights. So what ECO is doing is bringing a diversity of voices together to, to see um, difference of issues and opinions from different perspectives and that's critical at this point of time in our history. Good morning everyone um, and first I really want to thank uh, Jagorj for inviting me to speak at this very timely and important conference. I think you've put together such a rich agenda. It's incredibly timely with diverse voices and perspectives. Um, remarkably relevant and I think we're going to gain a lot from spending time together over the next few days. Um, I should also mention that in addition to his role um, as president here, he is the outstanding head of our business at Hill & Knowlton here in Poland, which is on a really strong growth path. Um, I think it's such an important time for leadership by communicators, so I really want to thank him and thank our team at Hill & Knowlton um, for your innovation and achievement here in 
Speaking of leadership, it's an honor to follow Adrian. Um, he's obviously an incredibly insightful commentator, and I agree with him that the intersection of geopolitics and technology is a de defining force of our time. Uh, quite complicated. Last week, I spent several days in Washington at two separate gatherings of Fortune 500 CEOs, and the same discussion dominated. It is uh, uh, really something that we all have to grapple with and in ways that we understand uh, to a degree, but um, really the heavy lifting is still in front of us. So, you know, we're really grateful that we've been able to benefit from him, from the work he's done uh, at the World Economic Forum previously to help leaders understand and manage the seismic shifts of our age. We now live in a communication environment where rain is political. These are really unprecedented times, and our jobs right now are even harder than ever when rain becomes an atmospheric event that could ignite an eruption in the U.S. Congress. That example of Burning Man brings me to the dilemma of the convergence of social, political, economic, and technological upheaval that's creating such a complex environment for all of us today. This dynamic is rapidly escalating, but convergence and it defies the best of our ability to predict how information, influence, and events are going to move and impact us. No one can say we haven't lived through a lot as a planet over the past few years, but playing out right now in this room and in every corner of the Earth is arguably an even greater disruption, one we haven't seen probably since the dawn of the Internet. Just think about it. Think about all the things you have to consider when doing your jobs. I think the biggest challenge for communicators, but also for society more generally, is disinformation. It's poisoning democracies across Europe and across the West. And I think communicators have a vital role to play in combating it, in combating the kind of actors who want to undermine the institutions and the norms that make our societies so worthwhile. I think uh, for the PR uh, practitioners who are going to join the industry, Technology and understanding the technology is going to be a big challenge. For example, we have a lot of new AI. We've yet not embraced it. We still think of AI somewhere as a monster. But uh, it is imperative that we actually embrace AI and we understand how to use technology in PR measurement, impact, to better uh, you know, the results that we're doing. The, we, we make great campaigns, but how to measure the impact of the campaigns via the newer technology that is coming is something that uh, I think uh, it, it is a task and it, it will be kind of a challenge for the newer generation. Uh, the next bit is also for the newer generation to understand because right now PR is becoming extremely integrated. Uh, it is no longer traditional PR. It is a whole bucket of things to understand and become a generalist and know everything is something that uh, the newer generation is to pick up. So I think these are the two main points that uh, the people have to The other things you could do with that money. Around the world, people are living in poverty. Don't you think helping them would make more sense than, I don't know, paying for the demise of your entire species? Let me be real for a second. You've got a huge opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity's big chance. So here's my wild idea. Don't choose extinction. Save your species before it's too late. It's time for you humans to stop making excuses and start making changes. Thank you. I've got two teenagers. You've both emphasized the importance of engaging and reaching Gen Z and Gen Alpha. My kids think the planet's on fire and there's nothing they can do about it. So how important is it that you reach young people with the hopeful and optimistic messages that they can make a difference that you've also both emphasized? And what kinds of messages, platforms, and creative work are going to work best in that regard? Bales, do you want to start? Sure, absolutely. I think it's absolutely vital that we reach that generation. But I also think that it's absolutely vital that we, that we have some hope. Humankind are an incredibly resilient, ingenious uh, species. We are doing it. We, we are transitioning to a more sustainable planet. We're transitioning to, to a greener planet. And, it's, and it's, 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 it's incredible what's happening out there. So bringing that hope to people is really a vital part of what we have to do. 
and there's there's there is as I said there's a lot out there I think it's 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 um it's very important that we that we tamper the narrative of like you know I, I, I scared you to death right there uh, when I was talking but but because you're professionals I think you can handle it but many people, when they get scared to death, they become a little bit um, paralyzed, not by fear, but by the enormity of the problem. Uh, they don't know where to start acting. They don't know what to do. What, what can they, as an individual, do? And we admit that most of the problem really isn't up to individuals, because 73% of the climate emergency is because of energy, the energy, use. and that's government. That's that's uh, that's that's government policy that needs to change over time. Um, but of course, all of us go to the polls. Um, or if we're lucky, um, um, so 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 there's a lot of a lot of a lot of actions that individuals can take, but we need to show them the positive part of it, so they will be able to see the, the action that they can take and 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 see that more action is being taken by everyone. Please ensure that your seat belts are securely fastened, and in the unlikely event of an emergency, we ask that you please put in your oxygen mask first before assisting others with theirs. Okay, so this is a narrative that we are all too familiar with when we board a flight and its importance is not lost on us. This is also a situation that we find ourselves in today. We need to reach for the proverbial oxygen mask to protect against the real and perceived threat of an unstable global economy, <laughs> rising inflation, the extreme effects of climate change and the uncertainties of an AI future. To put it simply, our modern survival instincts are kicking in and our needs feel more personal, urgent and real than ever before. I'm Nitin Mantri, Group C of Airbnb and the Executive Managing Director for V Communications for Asia Pacific. And I'm delighted to join all of you here in Poland to speak on a topic close to my heart. Welcome to It's Personal, the new rules of corporate reputation. The onslaught of these emerging and enduring existential threats is putting pressure on brands to figure out how to be part of the solution. But many brands remain focused solely on the bigger picture, long-term commitments, when most people are feeling increasingly even more anxious. Their needs are personal, urgent, and they want brands to act now. The gap between what people say they need to hear and what companies talk about is evidence of a rapidly shifting communications world one that brands need a new set of rules to navigate. Some of the things that we're talking about here in the panel are already happening. They're not an if, they're more of a when. And more of a when, people like you are gonna have the opportunity to change that narrative. Could that be an opportunity? Could that be a way of looking at what we heard today earlier, that it is personal, it is about reputation, it is about how people feel, seen and spoken to, it's interesting to hear that all the technology in the world, you can hear the journalists annoyed at the email that wasn't personal, or the email that wasn't for them. Could technology replace identity of access? Could we change the human emotion to be automated? I think that's an interesting discussion to have, and one that requires us to ponder the role of technology in the first place. And what do we value? Do we measure how many jobs we've lost? Or do we measure maybe how many jobs we've transformed or created with the change and opportunity the technology presents? Your role is to tell that story. And it's nothing better than to hear a story from somebody who's won a few awards. We are a global networking organization that we set up a few years ago to help support, champion, and connect the women working in our industry. As most of you know, our industry is populated almost two-thirds women, one-third men. But sadly, when it comes to the boardroom, the reverse is true. So we wanted to highlight some of the issues that prevent our very talented teams from perhaps moving to taking on those senior roles and getting the balance to be more effective. I think, as we all know, it's not about fairness. It's just about making good business sense. AI is going to be a, a tool that will enable PR practitioners to do their work better. Uh, it will enable them to uh, be more productive. And, and basically, PR practitioners should embrace AI rather than be afraid or fear of it. So that's how. So I think we'll just do our jobs better and easier and quicker. There's going to be a huge impact to the industry. We already see a proliferation of prompt engineers. And 
What people aren't quite understanding is this is version two. We're now in version three. We're going to be in version 20 before much time passes. And so that means that AI is going to start self-teaching. It's going to start learning. All of your preferences will be known, similar to how we see them in, in a basic generative AI prompt now. So by not looking further and beyond, what are those things where you can have expertise? What are those specialty items? How can you include AI to make reputation management and identity management and brand awareness more impactful? then you'll always be somewhat behind the curve on how people are using it, implementing it, and testing with it. And that's always the biggest thing. In anything in measurement and evaluation, you have to test. All of your tests won't be successful. All of your tests will give you data to make your organization better. I'm from Germany. I come from a very conservative country in that respect. So the country or the government at one time wanted women to stay home. So they have established a tax system and a situation of kindergartens and schools that is uh, not favorable to the situation. And this has led people to um, believe women need to stay at home. So you a raven mother, that's a German term, raven mother, if you leave kids at home and go to work. And this is still the case. And even if younger generations um, uh, talk about splitting up the responsibility between husband and wives, and more and more men go into this role, but still, in the end, it comes down, the mental load comes down to the women. I think this is a huge topic that is holding women, that is making it not aspirational for women to move up to a board role, especially if they know that the culture is still stuck in the past with most of the leadership believing you have to be reachable 24 seven. I can call you on the tennis court on the weekend to work for my client. And they know this is going to happen. And they don't want to buy into this. Understandably. Understandably. Um, Neha, what, what's your... The, the next destination for the next Eco Summit and the next destination is... Where's the drum roll? <laughs> We're gonna be Istanbul. The oh no! Are you are you excited for Istanbul? What should yeah, people what should they look for in the Istanbul? Town. I love the town. So yeah. I personally I will be there for sure. It's one year from now. Mm -hmm. That's for me. No, and then, no, 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 no. Uh, well, you yeah. could try. No, no, we we do the proper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have very few words to say to all of you. I started the conference by asking you to be present, asking you today to be the observer of this wild experience that we have and that we call life. My reflection as I end today is one of this like long line of humanity, one that came much before us, one that enabled, and enabled us with all the stories we carry, with all the personas and the identities we continue to create. And it dawned on me, you know, how do we shine through this chaos? How do we shine through the history that has repeated itself? I mentioned to Gregosh, I said, you know, chaos is something you can bank on. Of course, we'll need to communicate. PR, such a noble profession. The one of stories that, you know, the generations to come will believe, and maybe business models will be based out of having you here staring. And what I wanted to tell you is maybe let's remember the past. Let's learn the patterns. Let's realize that, wait, I was touched by the last conversation yesterday around ethics, around standards, around hearing that the people involved in this organization much before my time, realize the role that that is, how clear you're gonna have to be about your intentions that you set for this world. So my intention is that you carry through this chaos, like I've tried to carry through many Polish names, with light that you look ahead without fear. I do remember to be present because the heart that you all heard beating, it's there and it can change the tune. It can tell a new story. It can make a new sound. And until I see you again, thank you for listening to my sound and giving me me space to be with you. May you turn toward the light and until the next Eco Summit, we'll see each other again. Thank you so much. <laughs>